No, we haven't done three yet. Come on, let me grab my answer. Determine improper integral. Um, so this is a book problem, not an AP problem. Okay. So I know I have to do the limit because it goes to what? Infinity. infinity. So we would write the limit as b approaches infinity. Does it matter what letter I use? No. no pick a letter. Okay. Probably not x. All right. So to b. I'm going to pull the 7 out front. I'm going to make it x to the what power? Negative 3, Negative three dx. OK. We are going to do what to integrate? Add 1. So the limit as b approaches infinity of 7, <coughs> x to the what power? Divided by? All right, from 4 to b. So we've got the limit as b approaches infinity. I'm going to rewrite that before I try to sub into it. Um, x squared from 4 to b. All right, we're now going to sub in. So we've got the limit as b approaches infinity of negative 7 over 2b squared minus negative 7 over 2. What's 4 squared? 16 times 2 is? <laughs> 32. <laughs> okay. What's going to happen with the double negative? Positive. Positive. Good. What am I going to do with that infinity? Plug it, Plug it in. So 2 infinity squared plus 7 over 32. Zero, Zero right? Because it's a, a, big, a small number over a big number. So my answer should be 7 out of 32. Okay. Yes, so sweat. Yes. Whenever you get to this line right here, it's typically infinity or negative infinity that you're putting in. Okay? That one. Okay, let's do number two. All right, so this one was strange, okay? We had to do a L'Hopital, or we had to do a tabular method, and then we ended up having to do an improper integral on it, okay? Uh, we know we're going to use tabular because it is a partial fraction, not partial fraction, um, integration by parts. And um, we use tabular whenever we have sine, cosine, or e. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go for the tabular piece right here. So my u would be what in that? Um, I, no. I, x. x. All right, so what's the derivative of x? One, One and the derivative of that? Zero. Good. And then your dv piece would be the e to the negative x over 5, right? Yeah, or actually, let's write it differently. Shh, let me write that a little differently. Make it look better. So it would be negative 1 fifth x, okay? It's the same thing as negative x over 5. So if we did a u sub on that piece of it, du would end up being negative 1 x. So we are really missing a negative 5. Yes, Joaquin? Okay, so can, that, can this be a trick? When you see e to the negative 1 fifth, can you do the typical of it? Just be five? Basically. I mean, that's really what a u sub does is the reciprocal of whatever's there, right? Yeah. Yeah, and we're shortcutting it because we're not going to write all this in every single time. That's ridiculous, OK? We're more sophisticated than that now. All right, um, so every time I integrate this, I'm going to have to multiply by negative 5, right? So e, negative 5 e to the negative 1 fifth. When we integrate on the next step, what do we get? 25, 25 e to the negative 1 fifth. And then we alternate our signs, OK? All right. I am going to go through and go across and then down. So I still, this is the improper integral, right? 
So what I didn't do is I didn't rewrite it as a limit. I should have probably done that first. So the limit as B approaches zero from zero to B, I'm sorry, zero approaches infinity, not zero, of X e to the negative X over five DX. Then I'm going to integrate it. I've got the limit as B approaches infinity. Okay, and the integrated piece is where I go across and then down. So I see negative five x e to the negative one fifth x um, and then I go across and then down and I've got negative 25 e to the negative one fifth x um, and then this has got to go from zero to b okay before I do, well I'm going to do a couple of things with it as I go into the next line here so the limit as b approaches infinity Okay. Um, I will, let's put the B in and the zero in kind of at the same time here. And at the same time, I'm going to move these guys down. I'm going to move the exponents downstairs for my Bs. So I've got negative 5B over E to the 1 fifth B minus 25 over E to the 1 fifth B minus, now I'm putting in zeros. When I put a zero in for this thing, what's going to happen? Zero. Zero, because it's zero times e to the negative one-fifth is times zero, right? So zero is going to wipe it out. This thing here is going to be a zero power, right? So e to the zero power, what's anything to the zero power? One. 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 So this back piece here ends up being 25, right? Because it's a negative and a negative. So you get 25. All right, the problem comes in in this other piece here. So this is fine to go ahead and put infinity in as a limit, but here I end up with infinity over infinity, don't I? So we need to do L'Hopital on that piece. So really what I'm doing is I'm going to take the limit of each chunk of it, okay, really separately. So this here, I'm not done taking the limit yet. So I'm going to split that up, limit as B approaches infinity. If I did L'Hopital on it, so I'm doing L'Hopital on this little chunk, what's the derivative of negative 5? B. Be just negative 5, right? And then the derivative of this would be e to the 1 fifth b times 1 fifth. Okay? This here, I can take the limit the way it was, can't I? So I have e, or I have 25 over e to the infinity. So a small number divided by a giant number ends up being what? Small number divided by a giant number. That's zero, isn't it? Okay. Look at this one right here. Now I'm going to plug the infinity into this one. And don't I have a small number divided by a another giant number so what's a small number divided by a giant number zero, zero. zero. so what's left behind 20. And I know my work was pretty sloppy there but hopefully you get the idea that one w that one put together everything we've done in chapter eight right we had a L'Hopital we had the um, it, not the we had the improper integral and we had the integration by parts all in one all in one shot okay all right what else do you guys want to talk about from the multiple choice nine okay what's wrong this I used Lahopi Tal's rule so remember drew it to the top drew it to the bottom this thing here turned into this right I took the derivative of negative 5b I got negative 5 I'm not doing the derivative of the whole thing I'm just doing the derivative of the top and then the derivative of the bottom the derivative of e to anything is e to anything and then the chain rule gave me the one fifth Are we okay Josue? I think so. you think so? Yeah. alright All right, we're going to number 9 next mm -hmm. alright we good? I kinda get this you should. We've been doing the same thing over and over for the past week. All right. Do you want to look at number three? Yeah. Okay. So number three, I did write. If you, I don't know if you can all see, but the board over on this side, I wrote. I wrote our arc integrals over there in red on the right side of the board. Oh. Okay. Oh, I see. All right. So this is one. Notice this is one where I need to do the convenient split, right? 
because I've got a negative infinity to a positive infinity. So we're going to, hi, we have to ID, we have a test tomorrow. What's up? On the I probably walk. I probably talked about it with him and walked through some slides about what to do. But yeah, this is what I was thinking about doing it. So I'm sure I'm not going to walk him through a ton, but maybe the first thing. Yeah, just how to add it and then what to do. That's it. And I'm going to work on. I haven't typed the study guide yet, but I'll have it by first period. And then we're doing that as Okay, here we go. Shh. All right, we've got from negative infinity to, so that means I need to make the convenient split, right? So where would my convenient split be? Zero. Probably zero, okay? Five over 225 plus x squared dx plus zero to infinity of five over 225 plus x squared dx. Yes. Okay. It now is an improper integral the, with the, we are, we are, we've got to replace both the negative infinity and the positive infinity. So this is where we have to add in the second variable. So I'm going to say that this one is the limit as a approaches negative infinity from a to 0. Of five, and I'm going to pull that 5 in front. OK, so we're going to pull the 5 out front. So 5, 1 over 225 plus x squared dx plus the limit as b approaches infinity from 0 to b. And I'm going to pull the 5 out front again. 1 over 225 plus x squared dx. OK, I'm going to stop and let you catch up. AB, does anybody have a question while I'm stopping? No, we're good. Not yet? OK, you let me know. Ask Deloren. She knows what's going on. OK. Oh, OK. If you need if you question, you guys can work together, right? You get it? Right, yeah. OK. Oh. No, I'm saying ask Lauren. I know she knows the answer. OK? And then if Lauren doesn't know, ask me. OK? All right, you ready? OK, everybody got it written? Joaquin, you OK? Because it's a convenient value. I could have picked one, I guess, if I really wanted to. But zero is easier to plug in. If I if there was something that was undefined down here, I guess I could have probably done negative 225, but that seems a little bit ridiculous to work Or what would it, 15, right? That seems ridiculous to work with. OK? Yeah, zero is good to work with. All right? OK. Um, so let's talk about integrating this thing here. The good news is, is that they both integrate the same. Okay, except that we're plugging in different numbers. So if you look at the board, okay, is it arc tangent, arc sine, or arc secant? Arc tangent. Good job. All right, so you've got the limit as a approaches negative infinity. I'm going to keep the five. Uh, we know it's one over a. What's your a value right now? Fifteen. Right. It's the square root of two twenty-five. So I've got five over fifteen arc tangent of u over a, so x over 15 from a to 0, plus the limit as b approaches infinity of the exact same integral, right? Yeah. So 5 over 15 arc tangent of x over 15 from 0 to b. Yes, Joaquin. So this way, look up, do you see the board, the front board there? Do you see the top line where it says 1 over a arc tangent of u over a? u is, the, is this value right here, the x, but take the square off of it, and 15 is the square root of 225. OK? All right, so now we're plugging in. So I've got the limit as a approaches negative infinity. I'm going to reduce that to 1 third arc tangent, I'm putting in the 0, minus 1 third arc tangent of a over 15, plus the limit, uh, and I, these should be in parentheses actually, plus the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 third arc tangent of b over 15, minus 1 third 
arc tangent of zero. What's the arc tangent of zero? Zero. So those two are gone, aren't they? All right, so now I'm going to plug in the infinities. So I've got negative one third arc tangent of negative infinity over 15, which is just infinity, isn't it? Uh -huh. Okay, plus <coughs> one third arc tangent of infinity over 15. So is what what do we say the arc tangent of infinity is? Uh, Pi over two, right? That's the one we proved the one day or looked in our calculators. Pi or one third, there's something wrong. Oh, this because that one's negative, it goes to uh, negative pi over two, right? So negative times a negative is gonna turn positive. So I've got pi over six plus pi over six, which equals two pi over six, which is pi over three, which is e. I know. But think about how the study guide portion was pretty easy, right? Yeah. So the multiple choice portion is a little bit harder, so it's going to balance out. Okay? Yes, post way. So, so the first one, you split it, right? Yep. And then you use the two other rules? Correct. Every time we do the split, then you use the other rules. And really, you don't need to remember the other rules. You just need to know when you have an infinity, you replace it with a variable. Okay? Could you go, you're, I, you could, if you wanted, go from here to there and split it in, and as you're splitting it, write the limit. That's okay. But don't skip too many steps, okay? All right, we good with three? All right, we hadn't done four. Do you want me to do four? Okay, four is a converges, diverges. All right, now, it is an improper integral. Why is it improper? Where's a vertical asymptote? Eight. eight, so I need to split it at eight, okay? Because that's the vertical asymptote piece. Everybody got it? Yeah. Vertical asymptote at eight. So I'm gonna split it from seven to eight of six over x minus eight squared dx plus 8 to 9 of 6 over x minus 8 squared dx. <coughs> because it comes your asymptote if you have an 8 in there. All right, we good? Okay. Joaquin, what's wrong? Okay, let me explain 8. So if you don't know how I got 8, you need to listen. Yeah, take Okay, so the 8, so what would make this denominator 0? 8. So that's why I chose 8 as my convenient split, because it's a vertical asymptote. Are we okay now, Joaquin? Yeah. All right, so I've got the limit as B, or so I can't use A, I have to use A and B, don't I? Yeah. So I'm going to go with A first. Does it, it doesn't matter, though. If A approaches, what am I going to approach? Where's my improper part? Eight. So from seven to a, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put the six out front, one over x minus eight squared dx plus the limit as b approaches eight of, from b to nine of six times one over x minus eight squared dx. All right, are we okay? All right, you know I'll stay till 3.30, so you don't have to leave, okay? So you really, unless you really want to, okay? Um, so, technically, right, I have a U sub, don't I? My U, though, is the X minus 8, isn't it? So DU equals DX. Do I really need to do the U sub? No, I don't, right? But I am going to go ahead and bring this upstairs. So I've got the limit as a approaches 8 of 6 from 7 to a, x minus 8 to the negative 2 dx. Do you see what I did with it? 
I brought it up so I can integrate it. Plus the limit as b approaches 8, 6 from b to 9 of x minus 8 to the negative 2 dx. So remember, they're exactly the same integral, right? All right, limit as a approaches 8, 6. What do I need to do with this exponent? Add 1. So we got x minus 8 to the what power? Negative 1, and I need to do what with it? Divide by negative 1, which would make this? Negative 6. Make sure you're on time tomorrow morning. Okay. Early. Email Okay. <laughs> Because you, you need the time on your test. I will. Okay. All right. I do. Bye. Okay. Bye, everyone else. All right. Here we go. Next one. Okay. So we've got plus. Shh. So we've got the limit as B approaches 8. Oops, 8, not infinity. They look kind of similar. All right, and we're going to go from, oh, I'm wanting to integrate. I'm not wanting to integrate, apparently. All right, so from x minus 8 to the, it's 6 out front, x minus 8 to the what power? Negative 1 with a negative from b to 9. OK. All right, what am I going to, I probably, I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to bring that downstairs and plug in at the same time because so, I'm running out of space, right? Yeah. So limit as A approaches 8, uh, there's a negative 6 on the top over A minus 8 minus the negative 6 on the top. What's 7 minus 8? Negative 1. So I've got a double negative, but it's actually going to stay negative, isn't it? Okay, and that's inside this limit. Plus, we've got the limit as b approaches 8 of negative 6 over, um, I'm putting in a 9. What's 9 minus 8? 1 minus negative 6 over b minus 8. OK? So that double negative is going to go what? Positive. All right, here's the problem. When I put in the 8, what's going to happen? I'm going to have zeros, aren't I? Um, let's see. We've got, but I want to say that it goes, we figure out that it goes to infinity. What's the, does anybody have the answer key up? What's the answer key? It diverged? Okay. So. The issue is that the eight makes the eight is going to make it undefined there, isn't it? So when it goes to something that's undefined like that, it ends up making it diverge. So it's answer choice A. Out of all of that, yes, it diverges. Okay, you're going to like it more next week, I promise, because the diverging isn't as bad next week. Yeah. We're going to have, we're, the next whole set of stuff is a bunch of tests that we do to, so, to, to do to converge or diverge. So will I pass the next test? Well, I, I hope you pass this test. I hope so too. Wait. Yeah. I don't get it. Because it diverges uh, when it's 6 over a minus 8. It's because of this 8 is going to make that undefined, isn't it? Yeah, but what about the 6 over negative 1? Because this is going to go off to something that's uh, that's infi infinite, so that's going to be negligent, right? Okay. All right. All right. So let you guys want to look at six. That's another one we hadn't done yet as a class. There'll be something probably. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. Stop writing my bottle. BC is the last one that I write though, so. Yeah. Maybe. There'll be something though. I mean, okay. yeah. I didn't care about that. I only care who won school board. So. Uh, one of the current people got knocked okay. off. Hey, don't panic about this. this Make sure you know the easy ones, okay? Okay. And don't overthink the the AD stuff. All right. Um. 
They one of the one of the current ones got knocked out, but then Stacy Bailey won, who was the drama teacher from West Valley that just retired. And then um, I can't remember who, but two one of the current ones stayed in. She went in, and then I think so. I don't know the third the third one was. But. All right, we ready for six? Okay. So on this one, we need to do the convenient split again, don't we? Where's the convenient split at? Zero. Zero. So we've got from negative infinity to zero. One over one plus x squared dx plus from zero to infinity of one over one plus x squared dx. All right, before I go too far with it, so I might want to tell you, have you guys try it? Because we've done enough of these. Which one of those three on the board are you going to use? I, don't, I may forget to erase them. I don't know. Okay? All right. So it would be arctangent, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. This is very similar to one of the ones we just did. Okay, you're gonna do, you're gonna do limit as a approaches negative infinity, limit as b approaches infinity, and use arc tangent. So I want everybody to take a couple minutes and try it. Okay. So sign in is three o'clock though, not two thirty. Okay. Do I have to be a USDC No. You don't. <laughs> You guys ready? Okay. Let's try it. So we're going to plug in the 0 and the a. So limit as a approaches negative infinity, arc tangent of 0 minus arc tangent of a plus the limit, and then those parentheses are important, right? Arc tangent of b minus arc tangent of 0. What's arc tangent of 0? 0, so it goes. But here's the tricky piece, right? We've got negative arc tangent of negative infinity. What is that? Positive, positive. It, it's negative negative pi over two, which becomes positive, positive pi over two. Okay. All right, and then we've got plus the arc tangent of infinity, which is pi over two. Pi over two plus pi over two equals. Pi, so it should have been D. Okay. Hey, Miss Ballard. Yeah. How much is a 4 for 4? What? How much is a 4 for 4? I don't know. I don't know. 4 for 4. 4 for 4, it's $4. It's $4! Oh, you understand? Like, oh my gosh, shut up! Each item is a dollar a piece. I'm kill myself. <laughs> no, you're not. All right, let's look at 7, 8, which was the exact same problem, wasn't it? So we only really need to do one of them. Okay, so what are you going to have to do on this one, do you think? 
You're gonna have to do a partial fraction and then we probably are gonna have to also do the um, improper integral, okay? So let, uh, let's do the partial fraction part down at the bottom and then see what happens, okay? So we've got um, one, or we've got the A plus B. Um, what does it factor into? Uh, x minus scary. two, x yeah. minus one. Shh, I know, it looks scary, right? I'm just gonna use that one that's right there next to it. Okay, so we have one equals, what does this one get multiplied by? X minus one. Good, so distribute you get, good. Oh, minus a. And then what are you gonna what are you, what are you gonna multiply this one by? Good. So you get plus bx minus two b. And technically it's zero plus zero x plus one. So what's your what's your x equation? Good. And what's your other equation? You don't even need to multiply anything, it's already set up, right? So you get one equals. Can we have a problem like that on the test? Maybe you'll have this problem on the test. Okay? All right, and then b equals negative one. All right, so how, what do I have to put back into here to get a? So zero equals a minus one, so a equals one. All right, be careful what you ask for, though. Thank you. Yeah, be careful what you ask for, because this is where it gets ugly. All right, as I'm putting this in, I'm going to switch it to an improper integral, because I have to because of the infinity, right? You asked for it, though. Limit as B approaches. Oh, sorry, I have to do, yeah, I can do B. As B approaches infinity from 0 to B. And let's see, the A value was 1, wasn't it? 1 over... <laughs> x minus 2 plus, shh, I can leave it all as 1, I think, because they're both, they're, they're, we don't need a really funky u or anything. Um, plus, our b value is what? Negative 1 over x minus 1 dx. All right, so we're going to integrate, limit as b approaches infinity, um, we're integrating 1 over x minus 2. What do you get? Good. And then minus x minus 1. And we're going from 0 to b. All right. The limit as b approaches infinity. We've got the natural log absolute value of b minus 2 minus the natural log of the absolute value of b minus 1 minus, and put a parenthesis, what is 0 minus 2? Uh, yeah. negative, two. negative 2. What's the absolute value of negative 2? Two? 2. 2. Okay. And then what is 0, mi or zero minus 1? Negative 1. Negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is? One natural log of one is zero. zero. All right, we've got to put infinities in. Okay, so when I put the infinities in, let me make sure I'm. I have. What does this become when I put an infinity into it? Infinity. infinity. What does this become? Infinity. infinity minus natural log of two. But I've got infinity, so it has to be infinity. infinity so it's e. No. Mm -mm. It's still infinity. No, it's infinity. Don't don't cancel them. Okay. All right. Are there? I think that's all the ones that we hadn't done. Are there any others that you want to do again, or any other problem that you want to do? Because you still have me for 15 minutes. I ha I'm here from 5 to 6 tonight. Oh, yeah, okay. Are we going over the study guide? For I will do whatever you guys want me to do. Yeah, or I can put you to work. Okay? They did the entire study guide in class today. So oh, period? Both periods. I have it recorded. I just rendered it so it should go up when I get home. Number 7. Why? 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 Why
How are you doing, Giselle? Okay. Yeah, so roles, you want to put, you put the endpoints in both, for both of them. If it's equal, it's typically equals zero, it's roles. Take the derivative set of equal to zero, that's your C. Okay. On the other one, you're welcome. When it's not equal to, um, when it's equal to two different numbers, you do this up here, right? So you're going to use, you're going to take the derivative, okay, and set it equal to the slope. See you later. This will likely have an x value in it, which is your c, and then set it equal to the slope. Remember your slope. All right, so we need to evaluate that one. Um, let's see. So um, I'm going to rewrite it a little bit, okay, before I try to evaluate it. If you don't have it up, you need to get out the, look on your Chromebook, find the little tab that has all of our derivatives and integrals, that page, okay? Because we're going to need that here in a second. So we've got x squared over... Um, the square root of 1 minus x cubed squared. All of, what did I do with this? Didn't I just take it apart? Yeah, you did. Okay. So remember when we're looking at, and it's set up with a radical. And if I can't get trig, if I'm not going to go to trig sub until I can get the, until I try to try one of my arcs. Okay, so it's looking, I'm trying to set it up in that arc pattern, and we always know one of them is squared in the arc pattern. So that's why I did that. Okay. Um, I'm going to use a u substitution in here. So I'm going to replace this little chunk here. So I'm going to make my u x cubed. So du is then what? 3x squared dx. Do you see the x squared piece of it in there? We have the x squared dx, don't we? So we've got that chunk, so I need to move the 3 over. All right, so we've got 1 third du equals x squared dx. All right, so let's replace. I'm going to ignore my limits for a minute, okay? Um, so I'm putting in 1 minus u squared. And then for the x squared dx, I'm putting in 1 third du. All right, do we have our derivative table in front of us? Our integral table in front of us on the uh, Chromebook or in the front of your notebooks? Oh, no, it's not in the notebooks, is it? Anybody got it up? Or it's on your textbook? <coughs> Let's put it in front of us, guys. It's off the welcome page, isn't it? Okay, because that's where we're going to get the next thing from. It has to have a radical in it. So look, there's three. There's arc tangent, arc sine, and arc secant. Okay, so it's arc sine, and arc sine says there's no one over a, right? There isn't a one over a in front of arc sine, is there? So it's arc sine of what over what? U over a. U over a, so u is going to be u, and a is going to be what in this case? One. Um, and instead of doing plus C, we're going to put our limits back on here in a second. Okay. Um, instead of a U, what should I be putting in there for the U? X to the third. X to the third. So one third arc sine X cubed, and our limits are from zero to one. Okay. And then I've got one third arc sine of what's one cubed? One minus one third arc sine of zero. zero, good. Okay, remember arc sine means a radian measure, okay? So we're looking at finding places where our, what the radian measure is. So the arc sine of one, you're looking for one in the y spot. So what radian measure does that happen at? Pi over two, right up here, right? So I've got one third times pi over two. Arc sine of zero, so zero in the y spot happens at what radian measure? 
Zero. So doesn't that one go away? So I have pi over what? Six for my answer. That one really almost didn't fit what we've been doing, did it? That was kind of old stuff. All right, what else do you guys want to talk about? Which one? You want that one on the test? No. No? Oh, something that's going to be on the test? I don't know, I haven't written the test yet. So, sometimes I write the test from what we go over in class. So. Sometimes. All right, what else do you guys want to talk about? You tell me. 12. 12? Ten. Okay. All right. So number ten. Let's see if I got it here. It's that one. Okay. So it looks like we need to do um, a partial fraction of some kind, right? I'm sorry, not partial fraction. Um, integration by parts, isn't it? So, um, do we want to try? Here's the problem. Can I really do the tabular method on that? Do either one of them ever get a derivative down to one? No. No. Okay. So this is one that's actually kind of w unique, and we need to do um, both sides here. So let's look at this one. Um, if I do the L I A T E, what is going to win for the U? The sign. The sign is going to win for the U. Okay. So that means that D U is what? cosine x dx and then dv is going to be the e to the x so v is also e to the x all right this is one where you have to keep both sides of it all right so i'm going to ignore my limits and i'm going to write the integral of e to the x sine x dx we did one like this in the notes all right when we took the notes on this all right, and we've got e to the uv, so e to the x, um, sorry, u sin, is sine x, right? So e, sine x times e to the x is uv, minus the v, e to the x, times the du, which is cosine x dx. So I haven't solved anything yet, have I? Because I still have an integration by parts here, don't I? All right, so when I break up that integration by parts, let's see. Um, we need to, I don't see where I did my work for that. Everybody okay? What's wrong, Joaquin? Okay, so if I'm going to break up this integration by parts, don't I need, I need to do another u and, u and dv. What would my u be this time? Cosine x. Cosine x, and so du would be negative sine x dx dv is going to be e to the x dx and v is going to be what e to the x okay notice i'm keeping the left side sine x dx wait why you'll see why in a minute okay how am i going to know when it when you see this one that we would normally want to do a tabular on but you can't because both of them keep cycling and never get down to zero, right? Mm -hmm. That you're going to know to keep this on the left side, okay? So x, so mm -hmm. this is just the same as it was before. I'm going to put a parentheses here because we've got to distribute, okay? All right, so we've got to go off of this down here. Let me do it in a different color. All right, so we've got our u, which is cosine x times, yeah. times v e to the x. Good minus the integral okay of v which is e to the x du which is negative sine x dx so what's going to happen to this double negative here positive all right i'm going to read i'm going to distribute even though it seems like a waste of a line i'm going to distribute that negative in so we don't mess up our signs e to the x sine x um, minus e to the x cosine x plus i'm sorry minus isn't it because i'm distributing a negative minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx all right 
here's what I want you to look at. See this one and this one? What do you notice about them? They cancel out. They don't cancel out. But they're like terms, aren't they? So I can take this one, this well, one here negative. and add it to the other side. But they're like terms, oh, okay. right? So they're going to be gone. No, when I add this to the other side, what happens? It's a 2. There you go. So 2e to the x sine x dx equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. All I have to do to get this actual integral is now divide by 2 or multiply it by 1 half. Sine x dx equals 1 half times e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. All right, we've got it integrated, but what do I still need to do? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. How, what did you get there? I took the 2 and I moved it to the other side, right? You divided I divided by 2. All right. We technically now need to solve this from 0 to pi over 2 because we ignored the limits at the beginning. So I'm going to kind of take my work and move it over here. I'm going to ignore the left side now because I've, got, that, I've got, the, got it integrated finally. So we have 1 half e to the pi over 2 sine of pi over 2 minus e to the pi over 2 cosine of pi over 2 minus e to the 0 sine of 0 minus e to the 0 cosine of 0. Are we okay? No. All right, so I have 1 half. What is sine of pi over 2? Uh, it's like 1. 1. So this piece here just is e to the pi over 2. What's cosine of pi over 2? 0. So that's gone. Sine of 0. Zero, that's gone. Uh, cosine of zero. One. one, okay, times one, isn't it? Yeah. So, but I have a negative times a negative, which is going to make it positive. positive. All right, isn't that the answer? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that one was exhausting. That one was very exhausting. At least you only have to do it once today. Can we not do that on a test day? Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. Hey, when do you start curving tests off Joaquin's board? <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> Why not? It will, when Joaquin gets an A. <laughs> <laughs> Joaquin can do it. Huh? You can do it. All right, what else? 11? OK, let's look at this one. This one, we have to do a partial fraction, right? Yeah. Okay. So we need to split this up. We, I need to know what you uh, factor that into. You guys tell me. Five and two, so positive five, negative five. No. Negative two? Negative 5, okay, and positive 2. All right, I like it. Um, so um, let's go ahead and do the partial fraction. I'm going to do my partial fraction kind of underneath here. So I need to, I have 1 equals, this one here we would multiply by x plus 2, so that gives me ax plus 2a. This one here we would multiply by x minus 5, so that gives me bx minus 5b. Okay. And then I got I have to set up my system from that. So what is my x equation? 0 equals what? A plus b. Perfect. All right. And then my constant equation would be? Good. All right, probably use elimination. I'm going to choose to eliminate the B. So I'm multiplying by 5, and I'm just going to write it underneath here. So 5 equals 5A plus 5B. 1 plus 5 is 6. 2 plus 5 Wait, is... If you distribute a 5 into a 0, is that still 0? No. Oh, yes, it is 0. Thank you. 
There's something going to go wrong. Thank you. Good job. Wait, I was talking about something. No, you're fine. You were right. I was wrong. Okay. No. Oh. Isn't that one still one? No, the one, yes, that one's one. I screwed it up again. Oh, man. Yeah. Yes, it's zero. There we go. All fixed, right? Okay, so 1 equals 7a. Okay, so a is going to be equal to 1 seventh. That was nice of them. All right, and if I plug into here, I have 0 equals 1 seventh plus b. So b is equal to negative 1 seventh. So really what's happened is we have 1 seventh over x minus 5 minus 1 seventh over x plus 2. Couldn't I factor out the 1 seventh? Yeah. yeah, that's where I would go with this. Oops, 1 seventh, the integral of 1 over x minus 5 minus 1 over x plus 2. So it did change the sign in the middle, oh, when dx. The next yep, that's our next step. Are we good with this piece here? Because I'm going to erase it um, so we can get to the integration steps. Okay. Maybe. Alright, that's enough. Okay, so when I go to integrate, I have 1 seventh, and then when you integrate 1 over something, we get what? Uh, natural log. Natural log, absolute value of good, minus what? Not yet, not yet. Minus one seven, no, natural log. Natural log of absolute value of x plus two. And we're not doing the plus c, right? Because it is from technically from six to ten. All right, now, Joaquin asks, don't we get to divide that? Absolutely, because we but we can't do it till we have the minus sign in there. Okay, so it's really the natural log of the absolute value of x minus five over x plus two. Now you can plug in. Why do you get to divide it? To because it's a log rule. Subtraction turns into division. Okay. So addition is nothing cool? Addition yeah. turns into multiplication. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is plug in the 10 and plug in the 6. So we've got 1 7th natural log absolute value of what's 10 minus 5? Five? 5 over 10 plus 2. 12 minus 1 seventh natural log of what's 6 minus 5 and 6 plus eight. 2 8 what happened something went wrong uh, we went to we got to the division too fast that's what went wrong I don't like what I did there. It didn't come out with the right answer. All right, we went to division too fast. Let's try subbing in here. So 1 seventh, 10 minus five we said was five, right? Minus the natural log of we said 12. Minus uh, six minus five is what? One minus the natural log of eight. Everybody okay with that? All right. Um, what's the natural log of zero? I'm sorry, of one. Zero. zero. All right. So here we have. Okay. So now we've got to do some weird log properties. So one seventh natural log of five minus natural log of twelve. That's a twelve. And then negative times a negative is going to be what? Positive. Okay. So when we're adding, those stay in the numerator and get multiplied. So I really have the natural log of 5 times 8, and then the subtraction turns to division. It's weird. It's all the algebra issues. So what is, what goes, actually, couldn't I cancel a little bit? 2 and 3. So it's the natural log of 10 thirds. So it's looking like answer choice B. You want, Joaquin wants this one. 
I don't know. I think that that lot, the uh, one of them that we did, the improper integral was quicker than that one. Okay. Where are we at on time? We get out at 42 minutes. Okay. So that's where I'm going to stop today. So as far as tomorrow goes, I know some of you asked me for extra time. So here's the... Okay. So 12, we need an improper integral on, right? Because I, I know it's an improper integral because I've got an infinity up there. So I have to start it by doing the limit. So the limit as b approaches infinity from 1 to b of 1... Actually, I'm going to write it as x to the negative 6 dx. And this one, actually, for an improper integral is pretty easy. Okay? So... Um, let's go ahead and integrate what we've got. So we're integrating the x to the negative 6. So we get x to the what? Negative 5, negative five divided by negative five. negative 5 from 1 to b. Um, before I sub in, I'm going to move my negative 5, my x to the negative 5 downstairs. So 1 over x to the, ne to the fifth. Yes, you can, because remember it's a negative exponent. So that moves it downstairs. All right, I'm putting my b and my 1 in. So limit as b approaches infinity of negative 1 over 5 b to the fifth minus negative 1 over 5. What's 1 to the fifth? 1. So isn't it just 5 in the denominator? Okay, so I have 1 fifth. Um, now let's think about what happens. I have to put infinity in. So I get negative 1 over 5 times Zero. infinity to the 5th plus 1 fifth. A small number divided by a giant number is what? Zero. Zero. So my answer for this one is 1 fifth. That's a pretty good problem. Uh, as far yeah. as these go, that's a pretty simple one. Put that exact you want that exact one? I might change the numbers a little bit. How many okay. questions the test going to be? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Make it like two. Five. No. It's like the formula is going to be on there, or do you have to memorize it? Hey, you're curving off all keys. So are we going to have like the limit formula? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you'll need to know this. Okay. We've done this. It, all it is is a pattern, right? You just need to know that wherever the infinity is, that's probably where you're going to do your B towards that, right? Whether it's on the top or the bottom. All right, what else do you guys want to see? We ready? Wait, Ms. Beller, Ms. Beller, wait. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so Nayeli asked me to explain this, and then I'll go through and I'll try to do some of the multiple choice again, okay? So this was the chart we had that talked about the improper integrals, right? Mm -hmm. So really the idea is, you guys, at some point... There should be an if there is no infinities on that one, is there? There were two of them. One had infinities and one didn't. Section eight eight part one. All right. So that's the one with the infinities. It really doesn't matter if it's infinities or something else. It has to be something where you have the picture going on where. At some point, there are asymptotes, okay, and it's going off to infinity. That's in, when we use the improper integral, okay? Um, there are three situations. One of them could be where the infinity is at the top, and that's where we replace it with b at the top. One can be infinity at the bottom. They use an a, but it doesn't the letter matter? No, we used a b. Not a big deal, okay? Um, and typically it's to a number or zero or something. And then there's the other one where we've got the convenient split, right? And you get to pick the number for that. Typically it's a number where so it's going off or it's undefined somewhere. We like to use zero a lot. We didn't really see that too much in the study guide in this third one. Okay, we saw these two. All right. Yes, Josue. Wait, can you explain how like, it doesn't, like, for B, <coughs> you can just use A? Yeah, you can use A. It's, the, it's a variable. Okay. Because remember, this is like this is usually a number, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what I use in there. I can put a B in there if I want. I can put a J in there for Josue if I want. So if you oh, that's tied. You, you use the number? 
B is usually whatever you, whatever your, is usually goes to infinity or negative infinity. Okay? It doesn't matter what letter you use. Okay? All right. Did I, well, where are we confused? A and the B don't, doesn't matter what letter you use. They're interchangeable. So make sure you don't use the B. I know, I'm yeah, just I just wouldn't use a B twice. That's what it is. In oh. the same problem, you don't want to. You can't. You can. B can't go to infinity and to negative infinity, right? Yeah. So if you're down here in this situation, when you get to this third one, you don't want it to go. You don't want it to be a an, a B down here, right? Oh, sorry, a B down there, whatever the number is here, and then a B down here. That doesn't make sense. Or a B up here or something, whatever it is, and a number down there. Yeah. Correct. You want those to be different if you have to use two. We typically just use B, and then if we need to add a second one in, we put in the A. Okay? Got it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, did everybody hear what Marlette said? It, if you're con if you if you don't know if you've got a split or you don't know if there it's, it's if it doesn't have an infinity up there it has a number if you graph it and you see an asymptote at the number then you know you're in this improper integral situation okay remember pi over two thing. yes we had the pi over two thing going on a lot remember we did improper integrals pretty much the last whole week and a half right so most of the tests is gonna the, when you see an integral is probably gonna be an improper integral. All right. Okay. If it says something about converges and diverges, you're talking the improper integral right now. Okay. We good. Yeah. All right. So let's go back here. I there was so we were gonna I was gonna look at the multiple choice that we hadn't done in class. 